This is a classic house shape that I always think of as a milk carton, tall and skinny with a peaked roof. This particular milk carton in the neighborhood known as Wrightwood Neighbors has one problem. Some of the contents have expired. The house itself dates back over a century and is structurally great. But inside, well, let's go take a look. It's the 90s all over the place in this house, and that's the reason it's priced as it is. The agent's proposition is that once you have bought the house, you have considerable expenses to bring it up to date. One of the smallest things you might do, but most urgent in my opinion, is you get rid of all this baby blue sponge painting in the living room. It leaves you with a great living room, big enough for living and dining if you prefer. It's got a bay at one end with a view out to the neighborhood. And while you're doing the updating, it's okay to cover up all this wood. It's bare wood, as was popular in the 90s, but it's not historical wood. It was brought in. So go ahead and paint it. And you might do the same to these two pillars. If that room didn't scream 90s to you then, check out the powder room in the hall, baby aspirin colored. And then in the kitchen, you've got a 90s angle here for the peninsula. It comes off at this wacky angle that today doesn't make a lot of sense, but at the time was probably quite fashionable. And speaking of at the time, the 90s are at their peak right here. Mosaic tile fireplace. Check it out. They've even got fish that stand out from the mosaic. Then you've got the stair step chimney. So clearly there's something you want to do. You're also going to want to perhaps get rid of what feels like a dance floor here surrounded by the rest of the checkerboard floor. But where the work is probably going to start is right here. You've got this solarium. It's a great space, but the windows are dated and they need to be replaced anyway. So while doing that, because that room is over foundation, why don't you incorporate that into this as full-time living space and you can create more of a great room like the way we like to live today. You might start by moving, getting rid of this peninsula, creating more of an island parallel to the other countertops and an opening back into the living and dining space so that there's more flow like what we're interested in today from the family room through the kitchen into living and dining. If you're doing all that though, you can limit the scope of the work by keeping these cabinets because they're pretty cool. Your work continues upstairs. There are two floors above me with what I think you turn into four bedrooms in all. On the second floor, there are now two bedrooms. The one in the front has a great balcony that looks out over the tree-lined street. And then the rear of the second floor is the master bedroom. It doesn't now have a balcony, but if you took my advice on incorporating the conservatory as living space, then above it, you'd be able to build a balcony for that master bedroom. Beyond the master is a walk-in closet and then in the master bath, hello 1990s, glass block wall of the shower. Probably going to have to do away with that. Then up above, there are now two rooms in what used to be attic space that you could convert to two bedrooms or you might go for other uses depending on what you do with the basement. Right now the basement is a two bedroom rental apartment so at the moment you can't put a family room there but of course it would be possible to incorporate that space make it a family room and then the third floor can become two bedrooms, one bedroom and an office, whatever you wanted to do. However you reconfigure the third floor, you're going to want to take advantage of that long strip of east-facing windows placed all along the side, bringing in a lot of morning light, really creating a nice lively space up above. And if you want to talk lively, we're still in the 1990s, look at this composition of windows, put together these shapes and you get a sculpture and you even add to dot the eyes the light fixtures. We're on a third floor balcony. It's wonderful to have this outdoor space, although you do have quite a bit down below. The lot is large enough that it accommodates not only a big deck off that conservatory, but some ground level yard space as well as a two car garage. There's a lot of outdoor space, especially if you add that balcony I was talking about off the master bedroom. But from here on the third floor, you've got this great neighborhood view out over trees, a lot of reconditioned houses, some historical parapets, and all the way downtown to Trump and the John Hancock and even Bloomingdale's.